Hello and welcome to the campsite at Caravan Salon. First Monday of the event. A rather overcast day. It's 7.35 in the morning and the bus to take me in should have been here quite some time ago. But it isn't. So, uh, whilst I'm here, I thought what I can do is I'll have a bit of a nose around what vehicles are here at the campsite and uh, let's have a look at what people have brought with them now as you can see there are the vehicles are really packed in quite close so before anybody writes in and thinks oh well, i want to have a huge plot bear in mind that in the two years ago that was before the year before covid there was well over 200,000 people visited last year i think it was 105,000 despite covid and so everybody really might want to get a place to park their van stands the reason doesn't it really so uh that's why vehicles are so packed in as they are just want to point out this nice grand california sort of uh, color scheme which goes back to former days although the grand california of course only came out three years ago that is the best selling motor oh, rv oh, camper van i should say maybe from poland so it's still a camper van i think i don't think i can call it a motorhome because the walls have not been separately built here's a good example that thing there is a motorhome and this one beside it that's a camper van as you can see the camper van uses the foster here uses the original uh, format of the, uh, the the delivery vehicle as such now I can see got some vehicles which are very old and some which aren't so old and some which are brand new and cost hundreds of thousands of uh, euros and probably hundreds of thousands of other currencies as well. Uh, some of my preferred vehicles, such as this Heimer B Class, but also look at this fantastic uh, Mercedes RMB. So it was, it would have been very expensive when new, and I think that that was new in the 1980s. I think that'll be about 35 years old now. I think I might be wrong could have got that wrong so anyway some of us are on grass and others of us have to use the car park here so parking on uh, um, what you call asphalt but you know they, and these people here don't have access to electricity as some of us do <laughs> down here now I, to be quite honest I don't really uh, need the electricity in my own case but you know I haven't charged up for ages so I always use every chance to, I get to have a bit of a charge up but one thing it's you can see though is that there are spaces here now yesterday Sunday so it was people were leaving so people come to the weekend so today's Monday morning so there will be a few spaces but I seem to recall though first Monday two years ago when this was at its absolute height then uh, there were there were next to no spaces at all then so uh, anyway so it gives it gives a bit of view I'm trying to be careful as I film because you know people uh, seven seven no it's about 7 40 uh, in the morning so people are going to the shower some people with a dressing gown on and I, I don't want to actually get people in a stage of undress on my vehicle uh, on my video not that um, we see people undressed completely but that's uh, you'll get the point of what I'm trying to make so people who come by caravans may leave their vehicle somewhere else or not as the case may be M many people as you can see are using their vehicles for advertising makes a lot of sense to actually show uh, to use this and put their their products in front of those who are at the campsite and still no sign of the bus 
so much for German efficiency with buses. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll just walk down somewhere else and see if I can find a bus there. Okay, so here we have uh, Itineo and Florian Flermet, Reisemobile Hartmann, and I stayed at their place for a few days last year and filmed these vehicles. And here's my friend Toby, who has a YouTube site called Camper Toby, and he's now driving an Etrusco with an Italian number plate. <laughs> Good morning. And uh, so that's um, a friend of mine who has a, a motorhome dealership in Paderborn, uh, which is uh, to the west of here, a couple, couple of hundred kilometres from here. Morello Home. I, I, thought, I thought I might end up in one of them. But yesterday, I a quarter of a million euros, I suspect... Well, that's a new one. I expect it may well be some time before that happens. Here's a palace liner. Now, it's hard to say how much that cost, but a five followed by another five zeros is probably a relatively good idea. And you see from this though, how people are mixed up from the, the very expensive vans to those which are much cheaper. We see very many people have got stands, uh, so I presume that this, I don't know, Mondal Parts, Vokka 200 by Camp Crown, they'll have a part, they'll have a stand, they have Peggy Peg, uh, camping pegs for tents, for example. Using they're, they're here for the or Decaline who make uh, we, I think we all know their products because Seeker Flex, for example, uh, what we have to repair our vans with, and uh, oh, look, there's a bus down there. Uh, it's probably a bit too late to get in on it, but. Maybe I ought to make an effort. Oh, Niesman Bishop Flair. Really, really expensive. A nice van. Niesman Bishop's not here because none of the companies owned by Heimer have, are here at this event this year. Which is a pity because uh, you know, Heimer takes up around one third of the entire well, Heimer Group, you know, Heimer Companies, not just um, not just Heimer brand, but the Heimer Group takes up about one third of the entire floor space. And I learned yesterday that um, the, the motor home fair in Brussels is now going to be every other year because Heimer is only going to intend every other year. So that is the effect that one company can have. Right, well there's no buses down there as you can see. So place number two for buses is over here. And uh, I was today going to try and force myself to eat in the morning so I don't get hungry and have more energy during the day. But I thought, oh, I haven't got time now. It took me. And I got up really early. Anyway, there are buses there which might come here. And just to make the point here about uh, there's something very strange going on here. The, in previous years down here, this was all camping as well. But now it's been rented. Oh, I don't know. I don't know it's been rented, but it's been. It's full of Mercedes Sprinters. But full. It's not just what you see here. It goes way back as well. And Mercedes Sprinter, there is. It is produced here. Oh, near, near, near where we are now. And uh, so Mercedes is using that as a place to store vehicles. But 
why they're being stored. There's such demand for them. I mean, even this one here, you can see it's, a four by, it's on a 4x4 four four platform. Maybe, maybe it's for more, used by motorhomes. I don't know, but the motorhome use is quite, quite small. Anyway, look, there's a bus coming down here now. So this could be for me, so I'm gonna get on it. And so, no, it's not coming down to stop. That's the end of that bus. Oh, here's another one. So I'm gonna get on the bus. There you go, there's a bus coming. I'm getting on the bus, and so, hope you found that interesting. So a little insight into the campsite here at uh, Dusseldorf. Thanks for watching, and I'm not getting on that bus because it's not moving. But never mind. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting. It might encourage you to come here. Uh, well, again, it might have had the opposite effect. You might think, what a waste of time. No buses. Why should I come here at all? Good point. All the best from Dusseldorf.